we're back on the roof. So today we're going to talk about how to do a PM on a Carrier Weathermaker package unit. Um, so this video is going to be for you new guys uh, who are just getting into the trade. But this is how I do a PM and uh, a lot of people are going to say, oh you didn't do this, you didn't do that. Well, everyone does it a little bit different. So this is how I do it. So hopefully this helps you out. So here we go. Obviously, first things first, turn the power off. I usually like to change the filters first. So with these weather maker systems, uh, what you can do is you want to just pick up straight up on this panel and then towards you. Now, sometimes you can't get to it. So what you got to do is you got to use, you know, a screwdriver to just kind of get in there. And then you just kind of pry it towards you. Like that. There you go. All right, so inside here, see this rail here? You're gonna push up on it and then pull that out. Oops, there. And then it just comes right out, just like that. Then I usually will slide that over. Same thing, push up on that, pops out, there you go. Then you're gonna date your filters. Date these. Okay, so usually you want to go bottom in, bottom in first, and you want to get in that little channel down there, just like that, and then just pop it in that top rail. And same thing with your next filter, bottom rail first. And then you're gonna pull that top rail down so it locks the top in, and then to put the panel on, that top goes in, push it up, you'll feel it click and then push her down, just like that. And now she's locked in. We wanna to get to the electrical panel, so the control box is in there. Right here is the blower, so we're gonna to have to change our belt. And then below that's the heat exchanger. Or if you don't have a side discharge, you can look at the heat exchanger that way. All right, so once you get your screws out, you're gonna to wanna to grab another screwdriver and pry it out. There you go. So down here, this panel here comes out, and that's how we can see our heat exchanger. Uh, so at first glance, I can see that this belt is extremely loose. So yeah, that thing's terrible. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and check our heat exchanger. So we're gonna pull all these screws out. So this part slides behind here, and so is this. So what you wanna do is you grab it from the center, and you just kind of pull it this way, so it bends out of shape like that, and then this way. Now you can see your heat exchanger and see if there's any cracks. Now this system is on, uh, it's on a zone system. So definitely, won't, if you're on a zone system, you definitely want to be checking your heat exchangers, see if there's any cracks, because uh, airflow is always an issue. Usually they're going to be forming on the bends. This actually, this heat exchanger looks pretty good. So the proper way to remove a belt uh, or to replace the belt is you want to loosen the tension, pop it off. Uh, put the new one on and then tighten it because every belt's going to be a little different. You're going to be using um, 7 16 You can use a wrench or you can use your drill if you can fit it in there. I'm going to be using my drill. So what we want to do is we want to loosen these two bolts here. And then there's one in the back. So the one in the back is right there. So we're going to loosen that up and now yeah, this guy moves. Pop that off. This belt is kind of worn. So we want to go ahead and check our pulley and our sheave. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is called a sheave because it's on the motor and the one that's on the blower is considered a pulley. I think that's what I think that's what the difference is. Alright, so we got our pulley tester here. Um, this can also test belts, but so we're going to find our A, and if you look at here, you can see it has an A, but then it says 5.4 or smaller. So that means if the pulley is 5.4 inches or smaller, then you're going to use this one. If it's over that 5.4 diameter, then you can use this one. All right, so we're going to stick that in there like that. Let's see, that shows. 
So you pretty much, it should be pretty tight on all that. And you can see there's just a little bit, but not terrible. So that one seems to be okay. The proper way you put on this belt is you're gonna pop it on there, but we have it loose, so we wanna actually slide our motor up. Oh, there we go. See, that way we're not stretching out the bell, we're not damaging the teeth. Okay, now you want it to be pretty tight, but not overly tight, otherwise that's just gonna overdo the motor. One of the things I like to do is I like to kind of squish it in there just to make sure it gets in there. And then we'll go ahead and get a little bit of a bang. That's looking good. And like I said, you don't want it too tight, otherwise it's bad. So we'll go ahead and tighten that side. And we will tighten this side and we'll check see that's about right shouldn't be like ridiculously tight you know you want to have about like maybe a about a half inch a little over a half inch of play but it shouldn't be like a guitar string i mean you want it to be tight but not overly tight now to put this back on you just slide it in one side as far as it goes and then you're gonna kind of bend this and then slide it in like that. There you go. And then you're gonna put the 30 billion screws back in and we're good to go. All right, so I just realized one of the first things that you wanna do is not turn the power off. You wanna see if there's any error codes. Um, I already checked the, the BAS system, so that's why I just turned the power off because there's nothing. But generally speaking, if you're not on a, on a BAS, you want to go ahead and, and that's building automation system by the way uh you want to go ahead and make sure you got no flashing lights before you kill the power you know because i just cleared it um we're going to service the furnace so for this guy you have this separating panel make things easier there's a screw right there just take that screw out <clears throat> and then this thing just slides right out and now you have full access to the burner assembly. So one of the things I like to do on a PM is obviously I'm gonna check these contactor contacts. I mean, this looks like it's been pretty new, but one thing is you wanna go ahead and check your for tightness, make sure all your connections are nice and tight. So I'll just kind of go through them with the screwdriver, make sure everything's tight here. Another thing too is I will check all my spade connectors, just make sure they're all tight. Make sure I got nothing loose, so just kind of tug on it. I also check for voltage. If this is 208, a lot of times these transformers are set to 230, so I'll move them. Somebody's already done that with this one. Um, but yeah, I just wanna make sure that all my spades are nice and tight. Got nothing loose. Let's see how this, you guys know what that is? That's a CLO. It's a compressor lockout uh, thing. So we'll show you how to test that too. Um, check that video out there. I'll show you how to, I go in depth on how to test those things. Okay, cool. So everything is looking good. I wanna open this up. See if that contactor is in good shape. Looking for bent, uh, burn marks, pits, that type of thing. And it's like brand new. Another thing too is you want to push on it, make sure it actuates, doesn't get stuck. Sometimes they get stuck. Contactor plate back on. The whole point of this plate is to protect it. it. Keeps junk out of there, keeps bugs out of there. Especially if you're working on A2L, you're supposed to have these all covered because it's arc protection. You don't want those A2L units to blow up in your face, literally. I hate it when people take them off and leave them off. All right, I'm gonna check my run caps. The nice thing is, is if you, uh, you have a run cap, you don't have to take both wires off. Just the one that's not the start. So in this case, the brown wire. So, this is a five. And it's good. And especially this spade, because people are taking it on and off all the time, you wanna make sure it's tight. This one's actually pretty tight. I think I tightened it last time. Check our fuse, make sure it's in there tight. Yeah, that's all tight. So everything seems to be tight. You can go ahead and service the furnace side of things. So to get to the igniter, you wanna take off these burner. You just take off these screws on the top and then they pop right out. Uh, make note of the order that you take them out because they got they have to go in the same order or they won't ignite properly. Okay, so I'm gonna take off the igniter. So it's just two Phillips screws. And then that yellow wire over there, that's the uh, flame sensor. All right. Okay, the first thing I like to do is I usually just dust it off, you know, with some kind of brush. Usually I use a paint brush, but I don't have one for some reason. I think mine fell out or something get all the dust off of it. 
And we're gonna inspect our gap here. Just make sure the gap looks good. It does look good to me. And I'm gonna go ahead and use some of this stuff here to clean it. A lot of people they tell me don't use this. This is what I've been using for years and I haven't had an issue. If you wanna use dollar bills or hundred dollar bills, well then you guys are baller, cause I'm not. Um, but yeah, this stuff works fine for me. And try not to touch it with your fingers cause you don't wanna get your oils on there. There you go, that looks pretty clean. Same deal with our uh, flame sensor. We'll go ahead and pop those back in there, but before I do that, we're gonna take our burners here. And this is why it's important that you know the uh, layout. So if you can see here, I don't know, oh man, look at all that dirt that's falling out of it. Um, oh look, this one's got spider web in it. So yeah, very important to clean these. But anyway, you can see here we have our crossover tubes on both sides, and this one only has it on one side. And that's because it goes this way, right? You don't want it to go that way because there's nothing there. So make note of the position that you put this in go from there but yeah we're gonna go ahead and clean these off and get the cobwebs out of there all right so we got it all put back together uh, so one of the things that I kind of skip unless I feel like there's an issue is I don't check the gas pressure uh, if I'm doing residential I usually check it but uh, I'm gonna kind of just look at the flames and see how it is and the reason being is because I know that there's a regulator on this main line and for the most part that's gonna stay in spec you can usually tell just by looking at the flame pattern uh, if it's out of whack or not. So, yeah. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and restore power. We're going to cycle fan, make sure our build's not bouncing all crazy because, I mean, it feels fine to me, but we want to see what it looks like while it's running. Uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and restore power. Okay, so it's going to bounce around a little bit, which is normal. Uh, but that's looking good to me because it was like way tight before. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and put that panel back on, and then uh, we'll go ahead and start up the furnace, start up the air conditioner, make sure everything's good. Okay, so we know that the blower is running. Uh, we're going to check the amp draws on that blower, uh, and I wanted to put the door back on. That way we're getting our true amps. And I believe that it's these three wires here which are feeding that motor. So we'll go ahead and check that. So we're getting about four amps-ish, which is definitely within its spec. So that's cool. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and, oh, forgot there's a run cap right there. Well, don't forget to check this run cap for the inducer. Uh, this inducer doesn't have a pressure switch. It has a um, Hall effect sensor, which is these things. Uh, so yeah, but if there was a pressure switch, I would be cleaning the nipple and the tube. All right, so we're going to check this run cap here. This is for the inducer. We pulled off the brown wire. We can leave the common wires on there because it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, and this is supposed to be a four microfarad run capacitor at 370 volts. So we are at 3.9. I would say that's within spec. So we're gonna jump out R to W1. Flame pattern looks good to me. Okay. I know you're gonna say, oh, there's yellow flame, but that's just dust. Check it out. That thing does burn it off. So. That's mostly blue. Yeah, I would say that's good. We'll get an amp draw on the uh, inducer. Make sure that that's working good. Yeah, so we got 0.44. So I would say that's good. And we're getting 0.3 on our gas valve. So we're going to go ahead and call for E2. Uh, so basically, we have R to W1, and then I'm going to do W1 to W2 to uh, get that thing in. to dub to y1 now we do have an economizer in place so probably not going to turn on mechanical heating or cooling so we'll go ahead and try to cycle w or y2 to force it on uh, y1 to y2 that's bypass the uh, economizer cycle everything on as you can see in here so that's our condenser fan motor amps so that's good and the compressor i think is these wires here good we're not going to check refrigerant unless we uh, have a suspect it just takes too much time you have to remember when you're doing these pms you want to be kind of fast because uh, there is a time restriction usually so yeah i would say everything's in good shape 
So anyway, hopefully this helps you out if you know you're just starting out and you're not really too sure on what to check. Uh, as far as uh, you know, doing a, a preventative maintenance, also known as a tune-up or a PM or a preventive maintenance or a regular maintenance or whatever you're going to call it, annual service, whatever. But, uh, yeah, that's that's the process when you're doing one of these package units. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. If you want to keep seeing more of these, I could do some more uh, PM tutorials on different types of units. Uh, let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. Uh, so anyway, hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment to me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you want to support the channel, buy some tools on my Amazon store or get some socks from Camel City Mills. Thanks for watching.